welcome to the 46th episode of the Pickleball Crew. Just to start off with, uh, Ken had a scheduling conflict tonight, so he won't be with us, but we do have a special guest, and Jeff's going to introduce him. All right, y'all, tonight, uh, this afternoon, we were lucky enough to um, talk to one of, one of the better men's players in the Baton Rouge area. Um, I don't know if Brent realizes this, but it, it's Brent Roy. Um, Brent, you've been instrumental in um, playing with me, giving me little tips here and there. Uh, you and Holly both I play with y'all a, a good bit through the years, and um, I really appreciate that. But um, we're happy to have you join us tonight. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Uh, man. Thank you for having me. Thank you all for having me. Uh, Brent, uh, first first thing I'd like to like for you to elaborate on is to just tell us a little bit about your pickleball journey, um, where you started, when you started playing, how long you've been playing, and how that journey's been. Why don't you share a little bit of that with us? Yeah, no problem. Uh, started uh, late 2013. Uh, my wife, uh, my sweet wife, Jody, um, I went to play with a friend <laughs> of hers and uh, came back uh, to the house and, um, told me that, uh, I should go play. I should try it out. Uh, she knows I came from baseball. I was a pitcher for like 12 years. And, um, so she's like, you have to try it. So I, I threw it off a little while, about two weeks later, I went and tried it out. Um, uh, at the time we were playing in Breck facilities indoors and, uh, and, so I started playing, uh, kind of liked it a little bit. I was also playing golf at the same time. So uh, I had two sports going at the same time. And I, I realized that um, I wasn't going to get better in, in, in one or the other unless I let one go. Um, so I decided at the time golf was pretty expensive. Um, so I decided to let that go and, and pursue pickleball. Uh, I did that for probably two years. I just kind of, I didn't really know what I was doing. Uh, just hitting the ball. Uh, uh, so Tom Burkhart, uh, back in the day, Benita as well. Um, uh, kind of showing me, uh, how to play actually. Uh, I was just kind of hacking the ball, really wasn't understanding what I was doing. Uh, just thought it was fun. And, uh, then I learned of the, the kitchen, uh, NVZ, non-volley zone. <laughs> So I started doing that, uh, reaching it finally. Uh, then it, then the game became exciting uh, for me. Um, so from there, I, I pretty much, um, uh, again, I let golf go and, and started pursuing pickleball. Uh, I started playing tournaments. And once I started playing tournaments, I really got addicted. Uh, it's, uh, tournaments is just a, on another level for me. I, I'm a competitor. I come from baseball, so it uh, it, it kind of came through uh, through pickleball as well. So that's kind of how I started. Oh, I would probably say uh, two and a half years. years. Into playing. Yeah, two and a half years. weren't many tournaments, weren't many tournaments around back then. Huh? No, man. I actually, it was probably uh, I would say roughly at the time maybe 50 people in Baton Rouge was playing pickleball. Today, it's just. I couldn't even give you a number today. It's nowhere near 50. <laughs> <laughs> That's exciting just to see the see it grow so much, you know. All right, Brent, thanks for that uh, discussion about your journey into pickleball. We're going to take a little break right now. And when we come back, Jeff's going to pick it up again. Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of The Pickleball Crew. We are a group of pickleball fanatics based in southeast Louisiana, and are passionate about all things pickleball everywhere. Our focus is to inform, acknowledge those who help build the game regionally, and promote tournaments in our area. We do our best to present this with a love of the sport, a sense of humor, and a lot of fun. So join Vicki Wynn, Ken Wynn, Jeff Fuchsia, and me, Bud Klein, in our latest episode. We are glad you are along for the ride. So, so Brent, you're doing some uh, some coaching and stuff up at up at Stacks, a new facility in Baton Rouge. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you got going on up there? Sure, uh, Stacks uh, has grown uh, very quickly, very fast. A uh, great place to play. Um, two of the owners uh, 
played with me before. Uh, that's how I know them. Uh, they reached out to, they were looking for some instructors, some certified instructors. Uh, they knew me and uh, the one, I was one that they reached out to uh, of the other three uh, or the other two rather and uh, asked me to, uh, to put on some clinics, uh, private lessons. There wouldn't, they didn't know at first how, how busy it would be or, if, or I would be that busy, frankly. Uh, but uh, it, it, it has, uh, it's relentless. I mean, it's constant which is a great thing. People are wanting to learn, signing up. Uh, I would say eight out of 10 clinics are packed. Uh, beginners, uh, beginner clinic, advanced beginner clinics, intermediate, a um, lot of private lessons. Uh, I'd say I probably have eight to 10 clinics a month and probably the same in private lessons a month. So I'm at stacks quite a bit, uh, but uh, mm, that's great. great place. Yeah. It's just a testament to the growth of the sport because it's keeping you, Holly, and Cindy Morris all busy up there for the most part. Um, all three of you, I see each one of you in there coaching people, teaching the game. So um, I, had, I had said a little teaser earlier, um, and this is really what I'm – I mean, I'm interested in, in hearing everything you've said so far, but this is what I'm really interested in. So uh, Brent is fixing to embark on uh, a senior tour, a uh, pro senior tour. He's been working towards this. Uh, Brent can elaborate more on it for, for a year or two, if not longer. But uh, Brent, why don't you get into some of that and tell us some of the specifics about what's going on uh, with that? Sure. So uh, I knew at my current age uh, I would be eligible um uh, this year, 2024, uh, and going back a little bit, um, since I started in 2013, really got serious in 2015 with the game, um, really didn't uh, know what I was doing until much later. Um, and so, so therefore, I got into the sport a little late uh, for uh, my, my events, my age bracket. Um, so I put it off and put it off. Uh, wanted to do some big high-level tournaments at my age, uh, but man, those guys are just too young and too fast. Uh, so I figured I'd put it off, learn as much as I could, uh, drill a lot, uh, play a lot, play with uh, really good games, just to get on on the same speed uh, as the senior, uh, the senior group. So, um, so I met a, a, a lady uh, named Taylor. Taylor, uh, she will be my permanent mixed pro double partner. Uh, and I met her in, in, in another tournament. Uh, and uh, she told me then that we were going to stick together whenever I become eligible. So now that I'm eligible, um, uh, we're going to hit uh, a few. At the time, we were talking about a couple of PPA tournaments we were going to do, uh, but now we did, we kind of put that off, and we're going to do what uh, what is named the Senior Pro Tour. Uh, it is not affiliated with PPA or APP, um, and uh, it's uh, this is their second year running. Uh, they're growing every year. Uh, so pretty much is just seniors. Actually, the first year was just seniors. This year, they opened it up to amateurs as well. Uh, but that's what I'm going to do. Uh, that's what we're going to do. And uh, starting early May, uh, we'll be, uh, I'll be in Wheat Ridge, Colorado, uh, right, just right outside Denver. And um, I have a few more coming up, one in Trustville, Alabama, uh, Owensboro, Kentucky. Um, so there's a few more here and there, but, uh, we may hit one PPA tournament, but, um, but looking back at the schedule for the senior pro tour, um, I'm only hitting three or four this year, uh, kind of get my feet wet. I want to see what's out there. I want to get a feel for it. Um, and next year, 2025, uh, I will have my permanent male partner as well. 
he will be eligible. Um, so we're going to be able to sign up uh, many more tournaments than what I am this year. So uh, I'm also going to dabble in a um, uh, tournament called NPL. Uh, it is the uh, senior version of M MLP pickleball. So uh, it's called NPL. And um, they host a combine uh, each year before they start. Uh, the owners of the teams uh, kind of watch you play. You sign up. You go up to where they're having the combine, um, and they all the owners of each team. Uh, I think it's like 12 teams. Uh, they watch you, uh, and if if you're lucky enough, they'll draft you. So, but they they like to see you play first. Um, so that's what I'll be dabbling with next year. Um, my current Mixed partner Taylor Taylor is actually in it. She she played it last year, and she's playing it this year. She got redrafted this year for it. So, uh, so they typically play at all the chicken and pickle facilities. Uh, but that was the first year. This year they're actually not doing that. They're gonna be at a few, but they're gonna play at other places as well. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be pretty busy schedule 2025 but like I said 2024 I'm hitting a few getting my feet wet uh, just want them to see I want to see what's out there and uh, go from there so so Grant, you actually you actually made your decision to turn pro a couple of years ago and you just began preparing for that yeah well I've been preparing for five years now uh seriously wow just um, to turn just to go on a senior tour yes that's awesome yeah yeah it's uh it's I, I knew putting the work in <laughs> yeah, that's right I to, do they have uh, a my, master's my, tour yet yeah actually there's uh one called uh i believe they call the senior champions is 60 plus and champions is 50 plus so okay. they, they don't they don't really call us seniors anymore they call us champions <laughs> <laughs> i like so, that <laughs> yeah it's a little easy you know a little easy so Brent, better. where does taylor taylor live is she close enough to you that you guys can spend some time uh training together Yes, so she actually lives in Memphis, Tennessee, uh, and and uh, we, we'll uh, have already agreed to meet halfway, which is somewhere uh, mid Mississippi. Uh, we'll do practice on weekends. Um, that's our uh, plan. We haven't done it yet, but we have talked about it in between scheduling and tournaments and stuff that her and I have had and will be having. Uh, but we've played already together uh, in a few tournaments, and um, and we we've built some pretty good chemistry. So we're we're uh, I met her a long time ago. I would say probably 2017 uh, in Arkansas, and um, and I played against her twice and beat her twice. And she got my phone number and name and told me she, she, she never wants to lose to me again. She wants to partner with me. <laughs> that's one way of doing it right there. That's right. That's one that's way it. to pick up a partner. Yeah. Yeah, that or Mary or one of the two. Yeah, that's right. Oh, no. His that's beautiful right. bride would never have that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we'll, we'll go from there and see, uh, see what happens. It's exciting. Yeah. So Very. Yeah. So it's intriguing to me. Um, so you've got these two partners picked out. Um, we talked on a, a couple of the shows a while back about a lot of people, they jump in a tournament, they get a partner, doesn't go well, then they just jump from partner to partner. Um, I think there's a lot of merit in the fact that y'all said, hey, we're going to give this thing a go. Um, it might take some time. Yeah, I mean, the, the quality of competition you're going to be playing against is going to be really good. Plus, yep. you just need to figure out how to how to be on that stage. 
So uh, they sound like they're pretty pretty committed to you to um, to give it a shot. This could take some time. Yeah, yeah. And just like Taylor, uh, uh, my male partner as well, kind of happened the same way. Uh, met him in a gold medal match. Uh, it was a mixed uh, tournament, uh, a mixed event. Uh, we got all the way to the gold medal, and they beat us in the gold medal. Uh, afterwards, he came up to me and uh, said that uh, he was like, how old are you? I said, I got one year because I knew what he was after. <laughs> but he was like, I have two years. So he said, do you have a male partner? I said, no, not yet. Not a permanent. Uh, but uh, he said, hold off because I want to be your partner. So he's really good. Really, really good. So Where does well, he live? He lives in uh, Alabama by around Opelika. And uh, okay. yeah, Nevin Langdon is his name. Uh, very good, come from tennis, very good hands, quick hands, uh, understands the game, uh, very smart playing, high percentage. Yeah, really good. Mm. I gave him everything I had and he, he took care of it. <laughs> <laughs> I to even throw Sounds like you guys will all make too. great matches. It's um, it's going to be exciting to watch, and and oh, hopefully yeah. you'll stay in touch with us and let us know how it's going. Yeah, we'll do. Yeah, they, uh, they, I mean, they're they're players I have not played. I have not. Uh, well, I can't say I haven't seen because I I watch a lot of tape um, uh, because I can't play them. I know I want to know who I'm go going up against, so I, I kind of learn their antics, uh, put it in slow motion, uh, figure out uh, how to beat them. Because uh, uh, I like to figure out who, who I'm playing and who's going to be there. So I kind of already have an edge. Um, so I'm not going into it blind. So I've been watching a lot of tape and training a lot. So we'll see how it That's goes. You know, hopefully I can be consistent enough limit my errors and uh we'll see, see what happens hopefully i have a good uh win loss column for you guys if i get back on the show later <laughs> <laughs> yeah it'd be it'd be fun brent for you to um as you go through this every once in a while check in with us um maybe have you back on the show or have some field reports kind of like um uh, christian alshon has done throughout his journey and the the neat thing about watching Christian Alshon is he gives you the good and the bad. I think it would help people. I think it would help people relate because I mean, e even at any level, you know, th what you're trying to do is is difficult, you know. And I think a lot of people get discouraged or feel bad about it, but it's more about just hang in there with it, you know, and and give give your best effort. So I think that would be fun. If you would um, kind of let us get a peek in every now and then, kind of a state of the union of how it's going for you, even if even if you're over on the side, even if even if you're over on the side crying after a bad loss, let let Jody film you. I mean, we want we want the scoop. <laughs> so, Brent, let me ask you. You you gave us a good um, a timeline for your weekly schedule with coaching and doing clinics and everything else at, at stacks. But if you could give us like your weekly layout of what you do to train, like how much drilling do you do? How much playing do you do? Are there certain days that you work on certain things? Mm -hmm. What kind of workout yeah. do you have for your own training? Sure. Uh, so I typically, uh, well, first of all, I'm at stacks. I'd say on average, maybe three to four days a week, um, whether it's clinics or private lessons or just to pop in and play. Um, I typically like to drill before when I have clinics, I'll have uh, I'll bring my machine with me um, and uh, do drills there. I like to do uh, basically uh, I love a drop shot. I think that's going to be killer in seniors. Uh, especially if they <laughs> drive me from the baseline. So uh, hopefully I can put that uh, into perspective there and uh, execute well. So uh, basically dinking, um, I like to dink a long time, uh, at least 30 plus, 40 plus uh, rallies. Um, 
uh, what's another uh, another good little uh, drill to do is, is just playing the dinking game. Uh, most of your players can hit a serve and return and a third shot. Um, or if they get in trouble, they can get out of it by making a fifth, seventh, you know, uh, get up to the NVZ. And, uh, but, uh, but with that being said, just playing a dinking game uh, really helps uh, in that aspect uh, of the, uh, the game. So um, I like to do a lot of uh, hard shots, like I said, drops, um, uh, practice on things that, uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm struggling on. Uh, not so much things that I think I'm okay on, Though, though sometimes uh, I kind of fine tune that, uh, but mostly things that that I'm, I'm missing, or, or there's another shot that I want to develop, have that in my arsenal. Um, so, or there's probably uh, another trick shot that I'm trying. I'll, I'll just I won't spend too much time on it, but I'll figure it out. I may I may have seen it somewhere and decided to uh, try it, and uh, just I just like to have a nice little pocket full of weapons to pull out and so um but that's basically what i do saturdays and that's during the week saturdays and sundays uh sometimes i'll have a clinic uh or, or a private lesson but uh we have a little advanced group that gets together on sundays uh and that's when i play really so maybe if i'm lucky maybe twice a month i'm playing the rest i'm, I'm drilling and coaching that's great yeah right Brent, what do you think the best part of your game is? Uh, my backhand. Anything to do with my backhand. Very, very comfortable with my backhand. Um, uh, I need some work on my forehand. Um, I'm always str struggling to to work on that. Uh, not struggling to work on it, but struggling to uh, uh, be better on my backhand, uh, forehand. So backhand, um, I like to backhand roll, backhand block, backhand slice, uh, tap, top spin, anywhere on the court. Um, though I have been tinkering with a two-handed backhand here probably about two months now. Um, it's uh, definitely, uh, I see the, uh, the shot being made as, as, as pretty a vicious shot. Um, uh, and when it's executed, uh, it's, it's very hard to defend especially if you go on cross court. Uh, so I have pretty big hands. Uh, so I'm, I kind of hold my <laughs> paddle a little differently. Uh, most people uh, that play against me or know me know I have a different, unique grip on the paddle. So a little tough whenever I'm, it's a speed shot. I, I want to load up on my two hands because my right hand's already up high. Uh, so I can only come down a little bit. And my you know, my left hand is actually on top of part of my right hand doing a two-handed backhand. So, uh, but I've, I think I, I haven't mastered it, but uh, it's come along well. I'm, I'm enjoying uh, adding that. I've been having it in the back of my mind to learn and try, but I, I, I'm getting there. All right. So with that being said, uh, this show, Brent, I mean, this thing goes nationwide, so I'm sure a lot of your competitors are going to be watching, but... What's the what's the weakest part of your game? Would you would you say? Weakest part forehand. Uh, I would say forehand. Yeah, if we're at the NVZ line uh, and they and we me or my partner made a mistake, the ball's lifted up. Uh, they they can attack my uh, low right side. Uh, that's a um, uh, that'll be high percentage for them. Um, but uh, they stay away from my backhand. The ones who know me. Uh, I just I'm more confident with my backhand, so uh, so yeah, that that's a, that's a vulnerable area for me. Having and, played with Brent before, I'd like to have his forehand. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I take it as is, Brent. <laughs> I'd like so, to have his yeah, patience. Think... So, like that, that's my next question to ask is is because I've watched you play and you just are so calm and so patient mm -hmm. and just look like. It's regular old, it's run of the mill sort of thing most of the time. Yeah. That ball, like if you're playing with, you know, even four or five players or something, does it, it just doesn't seem like that ball's coming so fast at you. So, how did you work and what sort of advice would you give to someone 
to really be able to slow that ball down mentally. I know everybody tells you you have way more time than you think you do, but mm -hmm. convincing yourself of that and learning to take that pause, um, how did you just master that? Yeah, first of all, uh, trust yourself. Uh, don't don't uh, don't uh, be discouraged from uh, speed up ball coming at you. Uh, typically, uh, if a ball is being sped up at me, I'm treating it like I'm being punished. Evidently, my partner I did something wrong, and it was able to be speed sped up. So uh, my immediate reaction is to drop it, uh, reset, block it, uh, not counter speed up. Uh, a lot of newcomers coming into the game, that's typically what your reaction is. And if the ball goes long or goes in the net, you know, just be patient, calm down, reset the ball, get control of the game. Um, so that's, I've always had the patience, uh, not the skill. Uh, I had to learn skill watching other players uh, play. I knew I could never mimic. Uh, another player, but I could take a little bit. And, and actually, what I did was I, I, I purely watched 5 0 players at the time. This was 2017, 2018, uh, roundabouts. And uh, I specifically watched 5 0 players. I knew I couldn't be like them, but I can be like one of their shots. And so, what I did was uh, I picked a shot from that player and this player and that player and, and mastered that shot. Uh, I practiced it for weeks until I mastered it, then moved on, grabbed another shot. So, uh, I noticed that the, most of the time, getting back to, to patience is, is that was one of the shots. And uh, I used to speed the ball up. Every time a ball is sped up, you just want to, your mind is saying, I'm going to speed it up faster than you, you know, and, and you just right, can't right. do that. That's, that's, they're, they're, uh, they're uh, getting you to do that. That's what they want you to do. So um, don't, you know, they're baiting you. So I've right, learned that the right. hard way. <laughs> so just patience, you know, that's kind of what I, uh, Sometimes I'm not patient, a little upset with myself sometimes. I should have, as we all do, you know, it just happens. But uh, overall, just uh, I've always been calm in anything I'm playing, even if I'm losing 10-0. Uh, uh, still, I'm still playing like, like a 0-0. Zero, zero. So it's, you know, things can turn around. As we all know, pickleball is crazy, and uh, you can come back from a lot, you know. So, uh, Brent. If you could, what were three things you wish you knew now, you wish you'd known back when you started that you know now, that you realize now? Sure, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, number one would be uh, patience. Have patience in the game. Um, uh, I didn't realize that. Like I said earlier, I would just hack the ball quite often and uh, learn to control the game, stay in the game longer. You You will get a lifted ball to take care of. So just having patience with yourself, um, uh, kind of learn that on my, my own. Um, another thing, uh, secondly, would be uh, I wish uh, I would have been told to stretch uh, before matches, before you play, uh, whether it's rec, rec play or uh, tournament play. And even in a tournament, not just before that, particular match because yeah, as you know today some tournaments uh you play a, a match and then you sit down for an hour or two and then you play again boy you got to stretch you know i mean you condition your body that's part of my drilling as well as conditioning uh my body i want to i want to stay as fit as i can i want to stay as fast as i can um uh, so uh that would be one thing is stretching uh the other thing uh would be i wish someone told me would be um to uh, have a better paddle you know when i first started uh i just grabbed any old paddle and started playing matter of fact when i first started we played with the old dillers the old wooden dillers uh <laughs> and so that was way back in the day and uh and i immediately knew that i wanted some some paddles <laughs> yeah there you go. That's my first paddle. Yeah. 
That's right. So, uh, so I tried out a friend of mine. He was there. He had an extra paddle, and I tried it. Was a little, I think it was fiberglass. I'm not sure. Hunting company. Uh, I think it was called a blaster too back in the day. Uh, so I tried that, and it was way better than the wooden paddle. So, so that would be number three. It would be uh, have good equipment. You know, uh, when you're playing, uh, that way it then is just your skill. Uh, you have good equipment uh, to play the game. So. Good advice. Well, while you're giving some advice, what would you tell beginners? What do you see as the most common errors that beginner and intermediate players are, are doing? And maybe your, you know, top three things with advice of what they can do to help themselves out and what they can work on. Sure. Um, one of those would be uh, illegal serves. Um, I see a lot of uh, new uh, players coming in, uh, making contact above the waist uh, or a now a north to south motion. Sometimes uh, some players like to serve on their backhand, uh, and 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 sometimes it's a north to south motion. That that's a fault. You can't do that. It has to be south to north. And uh, so I see that often, uh, foot faults uh, at the NVZ or on serves. Uh, a little hard to see on serves because I'm, you know, I'm 40 feet away. Uh, but uh, at the non-volley zone, certainly they, they'll, they'll volley a ball in there and they'll be either touching or, or fall into the NVZ line. So uh, I see that often. Um, and some just don't know once you volley, uh, you, you can't go into the kitchen after you volley, especially your momentum. Uh, so that's a fault. So, uh, one, one, uh, fault or error that I typically uh, see on the courts today. And they, I don't think most are aware of, um, is that, uh, if you're not the last person to hit the ball and you pass the imaginary net line that's a fault and it doesn't matter if you uh, were coming from the baseline running up for a overhead uh, and it was kind of toward the sideline and you just ended up letting it go because you you figured it's going to be out so you didn't hit it but your momentum took you past the net line that's a fault even if my ball fell out uh, you can't pass the net line so um and also, if they they're up, if it's just a bogus type of hit uh, that came on the other side of the net and bounced up, and they swung and made contact on my side of the net um, before making contact, that's also a fault. You can't you can't breach the imaginary net line before. So, so that's what I see out there. I'm uh, I'm sponsored by ProXR. I've uh, been sponsored with them since uh, September 2023, and um, at the time, uh, Taylor Taylor, who I uh, played with a couple years back in Opelika, she was also sponsored by ProXR. So that's how I got the ProXR paddle in my hand uh, to play. She had some demos. Uh, I was playing with Engage at the time. Um, then I realized that... Uh, uh, I needed a better paddle. I needed something that, that could uh, give me some rotations. I've developed a, a really good back uh, backspin and top spin, uh, and it just really wasn't biting well. But when I grabbed that Pro XR, uh, it really has some grit, and it, it, it grabs really well, works well for me. So um, uh, they reached out to me and uh, uh, signed me on board. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm been playing almost uh, four or five months now. So uh, it's a good paddle. I love their brand. Uh, they have a number of different paddles. I specifically use the standard. It's called the standard. Um, it's not a elongated handle. It's uh, just a, a standard uh, handle. Um, and uh, really the 16 millimeter. Uh, I've used the 14 millimeter. Uh, it's a little thinner for people who don't know the, the, it's the, the thickness. So you got the paddle, the thickness. So the width is 14, smaller, and 16 is a little, a little wider. Uh, I used the 14. I'll, I'll, 
the ball just compresses too much for me, for my play with a 14 millimeter. Uh, it sends the ball out long. I uh, can't control my power on a 14, but a 16, uh, it absorbs it a little better. I can swing away and it's, it's going to go where I want it to go for me. Uh, others might not, uh, but for me, that's 16 millimeter works for me. Uh, more for control or do you look could I mean do you like less power is a good thing for you and you just try to look for more control in your paddle um you know that's a good question uh I I, I like I like to have a paddle that can do all of it so uh, okay. it took a while to find uh one typical paddles that I would have could only do one or two of the other uh, this paddle seems to do it all for me. So uh, I've, I've practiced and played with quite a few and uh, settled on, on this one here. So uh, that's the one I picked. And uh, so everything is going going well with Pro XR. They treat me well, uh, give me all the equipment I need. So I'm ready to go after it. <laughs> What a great discussion that was with Brent Roy. We really appreciate him being on the show. And now, as always, it's time for Jeff and his burr under my saddle. Your burr under my saddle, your thorn sticking in my side. All right. Uh, this week, we, we've done this a couple times in the past. Holly took it over one time. Howard Ward took it over one time. I think this will be the third time. But uh, Brent's going to take take it away, and he's going to do a, a burr under his saddle, something that's bothering him on the court. So take it away, Brent. Sure. Uh, so line calls, uh, that's my burr under the saddle. Uh, honesty goes a long way on the court. Uh, you know, if, you, if you're not 100% that the ball is in or out, it's in. Um, you can always, you know, I've, I've overturned my partner. Uh, you know, they, they've called the ball out and I, I saw it differently, you know, so I, I call it right. Uh, I have the reputation of uh, uh, calling good lines, you know, um, than, than the latter. So um, just, just call good lines. Um, I actually have a, a little story to go with this uh, that matches very well, so I'll, I'll say that. Uh, I was playing a, in a MLP event, and um, uh, it was about six months ago, and uh, just so happens uh, we had a line call disagreement. Uh, not really a disagreement, but, uh, but our opposing players hit a ball that was so fast. Uh, we, we didn't even have time to turn our heads and look to see. Um, and so since we didn't see it, it's in. However, there is a rule that you, if you have a referee, you can ask the ref if they saw it. Or if you don't have a referee, you can actually ask your opposing players if they saw it. And so that's what I did. Uh, I'll say his name, our good friend J.R. Barrett uh, was our opposing player, and it was him who hit the ball. Uh, you know, he, the opposing player had a better look at it because clearly they're the ones who hit it and they were looking where the ball went. So I asked him, was the ball in or out? And he said, do I have to answer that? I said, yeah, you know, I would like to, I'm asking you, you know. Uh, so he was like, I don't think, I don't think that's right. I don't think that's right. I don't think I have to answer that. I said, no, you got to answer it. I mean, if you saw it, he said, well, you know, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm not going to lie. And I saw the ball in, man, like that. <laughs> so, but that just goes to show you, and if it's good sportsmanship, uh, you know, if it's so close, just give it up. We're not playing for a million bucks. It, you know, it's, it's just, just have a good, good game. Uh, and like I said, have the reputation of got calling good line calls, uh, not, not the other. So that's my burr under the saddle. All right, Brent. Thanks. That's a great burr under my saddle. Uh, and thank you again for being here with us tonight. Uh, we really appreciate it. And now... Hey, bud. I've got a shout out. All righty, bud. I've got one shout out today, and that is for the folks over at Stotts Park. Uh, 
They were so welcoming, and um, we feel like we have new friends now. I'm going to mention a few names. I've got Donnie, Sylvia, Sharon, Jay, Jay, Christian, and Mike. We appreciate you guys uh, welcoming us and playing with us um, over last weekend, and we had a great time playing with you guys. Hopefully, we'll get back out there and uh, play with you guys soon, and uh, good luck on the new courts, and Hopefully, they'll start construction soon, and you guys will have even better courts to play on coming up soon. Thank you. All right, Vicki, thanks for that shout-out. And speaking of that, Vicki and uh, Ken gave us a little bit of some, some video and some stills. So we're going to show that now on their trip to Stotts Park in Mobile, Alabama. Here we are with the first episode of Wherever the Winds Take Us. We're here in Mobile, Alabama. This is called Stotts Park. Uh, this used to be two tennis courts that they turned into uh, four pickleball courts. Uh, you can see it's packed back here. There's good all four courts full, and there's a four four stacks waiting to go on. Well, and uh, anybody that tells you that pickleball is an old person's sport, you need to come out here because uh, the average age here is. 25. Yeah, we're so. the old people here. We're definitely the old people here for tour. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. A lot of beginners, but there's some good experienced players too. It's a good mix. Absolutely. So we're having fun. We're having a good time. So until next time. Cheers. Take a time out for a coach's minute. All right, y'all. Um, welcome back to the coach's minute on the Pickleball Cruise podcast. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about. Um, kind of some beginner stuff as far as fast hands are concerned. Uh, now I'm gonna throw it over to Ken. Yeah, so when you're in the middle of a dink rally, sometimes the ball becomes elevated and this is gonna teach you to stay controlled and to be able to get your paddle in a ready position and keep that ball back in play and hopefully in a way that it's unattackable. So this is a competitive drill this isn't, I mean, a cooperative drill. It's not a competitive drill. So we're just, we're working on muscle memory here at this point. So we're gonna try to keep the ball in play. We got a bit of a windy day here, so. And if the ball is low, just step in. Yeah, and if you notice, y'all, we're not trying to crush each other. We're just trying to cooperatively, exactly. cooperatively keep the ball going. Matter of fact, about control. the goal here is I'm aiming for Jeff's core, and Jeff's aiming for my core. So you actually want to put the ball in a position for your opponent to get it back. Stay light on your feet. Yep. Some of them you'll have to take off the bounce, but just trying to keep the ball going and control it. And look, <clears throat> notice that we're both in a backhand position because with a backhand, you can hit about 70% of the balls with a backhand versus with a forehand. So it's good to have your paddle almost at 11 o'clock and be ready to go. Anything else you want to add? Oh, no, that's good stuff. Okay, back right. to you, bud. Back to you, bud. Hot off the press, it's time for Ken's Tournament Previews. All right, thanks bud, here we go. April, April 20th and 21st is the second annual Dinking in the Delta, Greenwood, Mississippi. Go to pickleballbrackets.com to register. Um, it's $50 per person, there's over 40 people registered and registration closes April 14th. Also, April 20th, it's the Spring Fling Mixed and Singles Tournament at Pelican Park. Go to globalpickleballnetwork.com to register. Our registration closes April 17th. On 427, it's the 5th Annual Eastern Shore Classic at Lot Park in Daphne, Alabama. Go to pickleballbrackets.com. This is a mixed doubles tournament only. Registration closes April 22nd. April 27th, 28th, Vicksburg Open, Vicksburg, Mississippi. Pickleballbrackets.com to register. A registration will close on April 21st. April 28th, 
This is the Young Life Pickleball Tournament in Mobile, Alabama. It's quite a long URL. We'll put it at the bottom of the screen. Also, April 28th, Slidell, Louisiana, at the Fritchie Park Gym. It's Pickleball for a Cause. Uh, we'll put a phone number and a your um, excuse me a QR code to scan. Uh, this is both gender doubles and mixed doubles at Fritchie Park Gym. Starting with May, May 3rd through 5th, at the Club at the Township in Ridgeland, Mississippi. Go to pickleballbrackets.com to register. Registration for this one closes April 26th. There's almost 110 people registered for it. Should be a fun time. I know Keith and Petra are helping running to run the tournament, so we're looking forward to hearing more from that one. The following weekend, May 11th, uh, this is the Heart and Soul Pickleball Tournament at Pelican Park in Mandeville, Louisiana. Go to globalpickleball.network. There's already over 40 people registered. This is a fundraiser for the mission of No Heart Left Behind. It's men's doubles, women's doubles, mixed, and there's going to be a junior scramble, both for 10 to 13 and 14 to 17. Uh, we'll be using the Selkirk Pro S1 pickleball for this tournament. It's going to be a great time at Pelican Park. Uh, register now before it fills up. May 18th and 19th is the State Games of Mississippi at Halls Ferry Park, Vicksburg, Mississippi. Go to pickleballbrackets.com to register. The same weekend, May um, 18th, 19th, is the Pickle in the Dell. A uh, tournament's been around for a long time in the North Shore of uh, Lake Pontchartrain area, Greater New Orleans. This will be held at the Crossgates Fitness Center in Slidell, Louisiana. Go to pickleballbrackets.com to register. May 24th through 27th, this is exciting. This is going to be at Stax in Baton Rouge. This is the first annual Pickleball Fest. Now, on uh, Friday, you're going to have singles and a social. Sun Saturday, you have gender doubles. Um, Sunday, mixed doubles. And Monday, you're going to have a junior event as well as an MLP event. So it's a four-day tournament. Uh, it's going to be on globalpickleball.network. We'll put the URL at the bottom of the screen. Registration will close May 10th for this tournament. May 31st through June 2nd. This is the first annual Greywood Golf and Racquet Club Pickleball Tournament in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Go to pickleballbrackets.com to register. There's over 70, 30, 70 people registered. Registration will close May 22nd. Uh, it's going to be on an outdoor hard surface. Uh, there'll be 12 courts for this tournament. Going to August 8th through 11th, this is the second annual NOLA Pickle Fest at the Morial Convention Center in New Orleans. Go to pickleballbrackets.com to register. There's over 221 people registered at this point. Um, since it's inside the Morial Convention Center, they're going to use the rollout pickle roll court. Um, which I think is a great surface to play on. Uh, it is a very thin textured surface, so you feel like you're playing on an outdoor surface. Um, and for early August, you know, you've got 72 degrees, the lighting as well. And uh, on Saturday morning, Drew Brees and John McEnroe will be paired with pros uh, when we're playing on center stage. So if nothing else, that's worth going to. September uh, 6th through 8th, this is the Louisiana State Championship at the NOLA Hilton in New Orleans, Louisiana. Go to pickleballbrackets.com. So um, if you medal in the state games, every state is going to have their state championship. You'll be um, you'll get an entry into the inaugural United States Championship, which will be in Dallas, Texas. And if you're a gold medalist, all your event fees will be waived. Moving to October, October 4th through 6th, this is the Louisiana Senior Games at the Legacy in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Remember, this is a qualifying year for nationals, which will be held in Des Moines, Iowa in the summer of 2025. And finally, October 25th through 27th is the Hollow Wheel Tournament in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. 
registration should open uh, anytime. We're waiting for to hear from it. It'll be early registration and then general um, registration will open a, a week later. Uh, Friday will be women's doubles, Saturday mixed doubles, and Sunday men's doubles. And that's it for tournament preview. Back to you, bud. All right. Uh, good tournament previews. Thanks, Ken. And now if nobody's got anything. But I'd, I'd like to just thank Brent for coming on. Um, Brent, we've kind of, we're kind of doing like you're doing just on a, a different level. We've, we've taken this show and we kind of putting ourselves out there and, uh, not that we're the know all, see all or anything like that, but we have, we have ideas and we're just wanting to generate, uh, people provoke people's thoughts really. But you're putting yourself out there. I mean, you know, a lot, a, a lot of people are going to be hopefully watching you to see if, um, if if you're successful on this. So we appreciate appreciate you coming on with us and uh, being candid, and we're going to look forward to um, seeing how this journey goes for you. So thanks for coming on with us. Yeah, all thank you, you Brent. Me. Thank you, Brent. Well, all appreciate right, everybody, you. let's all say good night. All right. Good night, everybody. Good see night. you on the court. Okay, good night. Hey, from the Pickleball crew, thanks for watching, and we'll see you all next week. Well, that's it for this episode. We hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave any comments, and please like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks again, and see you next week.